接下来呢，我们继续来讲第四和第六题。首先来看一下二十四套题的第四题，也是呢，我们先看一段材料。Environmental organizations work to protect plants and animals whose natural habitats are threatened by human activity. One way they do this is by selecting a particular species to represent the threatened habitat to the general public. This species, called a flagship species, is one that people are likely to find attractive and interesting. The flagship species is used to raise public awareness and motivate people to take action to protect the threatened habitat. People's support of the flagship species results in protection for all the plant and animal species. Living in threatened area. 我们这个地方咱们就要解释 what is the flagship species. 那么同样的这个题目的要求呀，也是让咱们用听力材料中的 example， 然后来解释 what is the flagship species. 那么知道题目的要求之后呀，我们先一起来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in an environmental science class. So one example of this is the macaw, the great green macaw. Now, the great green macaw is a beautiful bird, a fairly large-sized parrot known for its colorful feathers, gorgeous green feathers with some red and blue feathers too. The macaw lives in the South American rainforest, in a part of the rainforest where a lot of trees had been cut down. Trees that the macaw relies on for its food and nesting, so the macaw was in trouble, and of course, along with the trees, a lot of other animals were in trouble too. Lots of birds, bats, and frogs also lived in these trees. So when the trees were cut down and cleared away, these animals also didn't have a place to live anymore, and their populations drastically declined. So, what a concerned group of people in the area did was they started spreading the word about how the macaw, you know, this really beautiful bird, needed help. They made little books with information about the macaw,、uh, with pictures,、uh, full-colored pictures of the macaw that showed off its beautiful feathers, and they passed out these little books, these informational brochures.、Uh, they distributed them to people in schools and community centers in the area. And a lot of people responded. They contributed money and helped the group set up some protected land, a special area where no one could cut down the trees, so the macaw would be safe. And the macaw's population started to increase, and other birds and bats and frogs came back to the area too. Their numbers increased along with the trees. 好的，听完听力后呢，我们知道。我们首先第一个任务呢，要解释 what is flagship species。我们要从咱们的阅读材料中啊，总结出那些划线词啊，进行定义。A flagship species is a particular species that represents a threatened habitat to the general public. The professor talks about macaw as an example to explain the concept. Macaw is a beautiful bird and has colorful features. It lives in the rainforest. And relies on the trees for food and the nesting, but the trees have been cut down. So macaw and a lot of other animals are in trouble. The populations of animals drastically inclined. 那么巨幅的下降，那么急速的下降，都可以用这个。Then the group of people used macaw to represent the threatened habitat. They spread the word about how Macaw needed the help and distribute books with Macaw's pictures to the school and other community places. After that, a lot of people started to take actions and contribute money to help set up a protected land, a special area where no one could cut down the trees. So the number of Macaw and other animals increased. 那么这样就是一个结果。那么这就是这道题的答案。那么下一道题也是同样的，我们先看一段材料
嗯，从看材料的过程中呢，我们就要找出我们要解释的词是什么，而它周边的这些信息都尤为重要，所以我划线的地方啊，都是大家要非常注意的。一般它会出现在段首、段末或者在这个词周围，大家一定要注意这几个位置。Technological change occurs very rapidly in modern society, sometimes more rapidly than many people are prepared for. As a result, when new technology emerges, people may struggle for a time to adapt to it. This period of transition, when people are adjusting to technological change, is known as cultural lag. 我们有 jet lag， 是吧？这儿出现了一个 cultural lag. At first, people are not accustomed to the new technology and may not understand it. They may therefore have a negative attitude toward it. Over time, however, their attitudes change, and they successfully incorporate the new technology into their daily lives. 我们这个地方就解释了 what is cultural lag. 我们就要从阅读材料中啊找出咱们下定义啊需要的一些材料。那么同样的，这个题目的要求啊也是让咱们结合 example 来解释 cultural lag. 那么首先呢，第一个任务我们就要下定义，第二个任务就是解释的 example。那么知道题目要求以后啊，我们先来一起来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture from a sociology class. Now the invention of the telephone was revolutionary. It was a much easier and faster way of communicating than anything else available at the time. However, When the telephone first became widely available towards the end of the 19th century, only businesses used telephones because businesses realized how the telephone could benefit them, how it could help them be more productive. But a lot of people in the general public didn't think the phone should be used for personal communication. Some people didn't like to listen to someone's voice without being able to see them. Also. A lot of people thought that it was rude to call someone on the telephone instead of visiting them in person. They missed the sense of personal connection they got from meeting someone. However, as we all know, people gradually changed their minds about the telephone. It took about 30 years, but eventually most homes came to have telephones, and everyone came to depend on them. Talking to someone you couldn't see. Began to seem more and more normal. Friends began to call each other just to chat, just for fun. And after everyone agreed on certain rules of politeness,、uh, such as not calling someone late at night, no one considered it rude anymore to make personal phone calls. 好的，听力过后呢，我们就要在题目中呢，第一部分呀，解释一下 what is cultural lag. Cultural lag is a period of transition. When people get used to a technological change, 那么这个啊，是不是就是咱咱们阅读材料中提取出来的这样一个内容 ？The professor gives an example of the telephone. At the end of the 19th century, when telephone became widely available, only businesses used it. 那么只有商用啊。But the majority of the public, 其实这个。词组啊，大家可以常用。那么大多数的人，不要说 more and more people， 应该说 a growing number of people。不要说 most people， 可以说 the majority of people。这个都是可以替换的。Didn't value is used for personal communication because, for example, some of them didn't like to communicate without face to face. Others consider it rude to call someone without visiting him or her in person. 那么又是怎么变化的呢 ？However, this attitude towards telephone changed over the 30 years thereafter. Talking to someone on the phone is no longer rude or abnormal. For example, friends like to call each other just for a chat, and the rules of politeness have also changed. Like no one would consider the personal call impolite unless it is made late at night. 那么这个地方就是先给啊咱们的 definition。那么第二步呢，就是 example。那
。嗯，知道这样两个步骤之后呢，咱们以后作答啊就有一个针对性。然后下一个呢，我们就来看一下第六题。那么第六题就全靠咱们听了。我们首先来审一下题，知道题目啊要求的这个内容是什么。Using the examples from the lecture, discuss two types of narrators. That an author of fiction might use. 那么两种叙事方式都会是什么呢？其实咱们有一定文学功底的同学啊，相信都会知道这两种叙事方式是什么。那就对咱们听力啊很有帮助了。所以这题是什么？咱们平常啊一定要多多积累，不管是哪一个范畴的。你可能啊对理科的学科很感兴趣，但是文科啊也要普遍涉猎一下。那么文科同学也要多去看一些，比如生物、地理这样范围的书。和材料，这样咱们积累过后呀，想必一定是非常有帮助的。我知道题目要求之后呀，我们还是先听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture in a literature class. Authors of fiction, um, short stories and novels, of course, have many decisions to make when they are writing their works. One of those decisions is how they are going to narrate or tell the story. What perspective or what point of view the story will be told from? So authors need to choose a type of narrator, some person or voice to tell the story, and this narrator can affect the reader's experience when they read a story. Now, the author might choose to have an objective narrator. An objective narrator can describe what people, the characters in a story, what they do and what they say, but that's about all. So suppose we have a story, for example, that is about a man and woman about to take a trip. When a story is told by an objective narrator, the only information that we get as readers is what the characters say to each other, what they do. They get on the train, they sit down, they look out the window. That's all. And this leaves questions that force the reader to interpret the events. To fill in information and decide what the characters' conversation and actions might mean, another kind of narrator an author might use is an omniscient narrator. In this case, the narrator,、uh, the voice that is telling the story, knows everything, and I mean everything about the characters. So let's imagine our same man and woman traveling, but described by an omniscient narrator. Not only do we, the readers, Know what they do and say, but we also know what they're thinking. For example, we are told that the couple is going to visit an old friend of the man's, and we learn what the man is thinking—that he is nervous because he hasn't seen his friend in a long time, that he is worried if his wife will like the friend. So, an omniscient narrator provides more information and answers questions that the reader might have about the characters or the action. 好的，听力过后呢，相信大家啊都记下了一些重点。我们先来参照一下这一份答案。The professor talks about two types of narrator in fiction. 我们先来一个总括的一个句子。The first type， 那么第一种呢 ，is an objective narrator. An objective narrator can describe what the characters do and say. For example, if a man and woman is about to take a trip. The only information we get from the objective narrator is what the characters say to each other and their actions, such as getting on a train and looking out the window. It focuses the reader to fill in the information and to decide what the conversation might mean. The second type is an omniscient narrator. 那么全能视角 ，an omniscient narrator knows everything about the characters. In the example, the omniscient narrator knows not only what they say and do, but also what they are thinking. Like it may tell us that the man is nervous because he hasn't seen his friend in a long time, and he is worried about whether his wife will like his friend. 你就是内心活动啊，都会被写出来。这就是一种全能视角。有，这就是这一部分的第六题。那么下下一部分呢，就是二十五套题的第六题了。Using point examples from the lecture, explain two ways weathering occurs. 那么两种 weathering 究竟是什么呢？我们知道这个题目的要求以后呀，我们先一起来听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture in a geology class. 
Rocks near the Earth's surface are directly exposed to elements in the environment, such as air and water, and also to conditions such as temperature change, as well as to living organisms. And this exposure to the environment can actually cause even huge rocks to break into smaller pieces. This process is called weathering. Let's talk about a couple of ways weathering occurs. First of all, rocks are often exposed to water. In cold, wet environments, rocks can break due to water freezing inside of them. How does this happen? Well, as I'm sure you know, when water freezes, it expands. And over time, this can lead to weathering. Um, imagine a rock with a small opening or crack in it. Uh, it rains and water gets into the crack and stays there. Then, at night, the temperature drops and the water inside the crack freezes. This growing, expanding ice pushes outward on either side of the crack, causing it to get slightly bigger. When this happens again and again, the crack becomes larger, and eventually pieces of the rock break off. Okay, weathering can also be caused by plants, by plant growth. If a plant seed gets blown into the crack of a rock, it may take root, and its roots will grow down into the rock. The plant's roots can cause the rock to break down, a fracture. You may have seen this with large trees growing on top of a rock, a great example of this. Usually there's enough dirt in the crack of a rock or on top of a rock to allow a tree to start growing there. As the tree grows over the years, the tree's roots extend downward into the cracks and crevices of the rock in search of water and nutrients. Over time, the roots get bigger and grow deeper, widening and enlarging the cracks, causing the rock to break apart. 好的，听力过后呢，我们还是啊，先来一个总括性的句子会比较好一点。The professor explains two ways weathering occurs. 那么第第一、二就分别进行详述就可以了。Firstly, the exposure to water, which means that the rock breaks because of freezing water inside it, which would then expand. To be more specific, if the rains get into cracks. Will freeze due to low temperature. 结冰以后呢？ Then the growing, expanding ice pushes outward, causing the rock to break off little by little. The second way of weathering happens under plant growth. 那么第二种跟植物有关， which means after the plant seeds get down to take root, it will grow into the rock, causing it to fracture. 那么就开始啊。让这个岩石呀、啊、碎裂了 ，fracture. A good example for it is big trees growing on the top of a rock. They gradually extend down their roots for nutrients and water. 为了养分啊和水分啊，就把那个根啊扎进去了。As a result, widening and enlarging the cracks will grow and breaking it apart at last. 那么首先呢，我们就先来一个总括性的话的。The professor said or uses some examples to illustrate or explain. 那么接着啊，就把这两种啊说出来就可以了。那么这就是第六题的特色。那么以上呢就是咱们讲课的全部内容了。非常感谢大家。